welcome back guys welcome back now this circuit looks very very messy however what i am going to do from now on is maybe not do everything live on screen so that that way i can get through the content a bit quicker when recording my screen so what i am going to do is get everything ready beforehand get the circuit diagram the block diagram the flow chart the pseudocode everything ready beforehand and then simply go over what i've done on screen and still share all the code and schematics and everything with you guys so you can still follow along. Today I'm going to be looking at the LDR, light dependent resistor. This looks very messy because I'm working on all three boards, not at the same time, but I'm using all three boards because I don't want to keep unplugging and replugging things. So this is going to get a bit messy in the videos maybe, but the circuit diagram that I show you on screen, that's exactly how I've connected them on the board. So let me push these two away. And this is the one we're going to be focusing on. So this is the LDR, that tiny device there that my finger's touching. See if I can get that to focus. That's the LDR there. Now I have a few other devices on here. For example, this is a hall sensor, but we're not going to focus on that one for now. We're only going to focus on looking at the LDR. What does the LDR do? Well, the LDR is a light dependent resistor. So the resistance changes, the values change based on the amount of light that there is. So if you guys look outside or anywhere in the world, you might have street lights. And these street lights typically tend to come on based on the amount of light that there is. It wouldn't make sense to have them as a preset or a pre-programmed thing unless the light levels in, in your country never changes. For example, here in the UK, it gets really dark around 4 or 5 p.m. in winter, like pitch dark, like 7, 8, 9 p.m. in other countries. Whereas in Jamaica, I know that it stays the same more or less all the year round. So maybe 6 p.m. is when the sun starts to set, so we can leave that one as it is. However, it does change 20 to 30 minutes, right? So an LDR is going to be really good because an LDR doesn't care what time of day it is. An LDR only cares about the amount of light that is present. So if the amount of light decreases, you can tell the circuit to do something. In this case, a Raspberry Pi. If the light level drops below a certain value, then do this thing. If it goes above a certain level, then do that thing. So here I have my block diagram, very, very simple circuit. And all I've said here is the input processing and output. My input is gonna be my LDR, my light dependent resistor. Let me zoom in. My processing is gonna come from the Raspberry Pi again. Now I've left Arduino and PIC in here just because some people might actually be using those. And the same process would apply for the unit six exam for BTEC level three engineering. For output, I have the shell or the screen. And that simply means that area at the bottom where in Thunny or in Python, I'm going to run it and you see the results down there. My flow chart, my flow diagram, and I've simply said, start the program. So this is going to be an input. The input is going to get the LDR value. It's going to put the value that that LDR can read on screen. And remember, for the Raspberry Pi Pico, it's going to always come in as a 16-bit value. So even if your sensor is a 12-bit value, it's going to come in as a 16-bit value. So that's what all this is saying is start the program, get the LDR value here, and then below that we put the value on screen and we keep repeating that process. Now I've put end in here just because it's something you should have for everyone, but technically I did this in a while loop, so it should never really and truly end until I remove power from the system, but I still put that there. Here I've just got my parts and justification. Let me zoom in. And I have my Raspberry Pi Pico. Say why you've chosen Raspberry Pi Pico. This again is for the Unit 6. This is specifically for the BTEC Level 3 Engineering Unit 6 exam, where they need a, a list of all the parts and they need a justification as to why. So justification just simply means why you've actually chosen to use that part, why that part over another one, or why that part in general. So that's why I keep doing this. This is not just for the general person trying to learn the Raspberry Pi and the Pico and MicroPython and Python. You don't really need to focus on this section. But for people doing BTEC Level 3 Engineering Unit 6, microcontrollers for engineers, this is what you will need. So, uh, I have the Raspberry Pi Pico. I've gone over that quite a few times. The LDR I've explained at the beginning of this video, a light-dependent resistor's value will change based on the level of light that it can detect. So, for example, um, in some cases, well, in this one, I think this one, the brighter it gets, the less resistance there is, the darker it gets, the more resistant there is, or vice versa. It really, really doesn't matter, right? So that's all that is. I've got my block diagram here again. I've explained that. Pseudocode is for this one is going to be very simple. It's going to be start. And before I even get to input, I should put repeat until, or just repeat in general. R-E-P-E-A-T, repeat uh, forever, because it's a while loop. Why not? And then I'm going to say input, 
I should indent both of these things actually. So I'm going to press tab on my, oh, that doesn't work. So let me just highlight one of them. That doesn't work either. Let me just do that just to show that it actually comes under that. And if you're using Python or any other language that uses indentation, it's just a nice way to show that this falls inside of that category of that loop. So I've said input, get the value from the linear Hall sensor. This should be not Hall sensor, but this should be LDR. I think I copied and pasted a few things from the um, LDR, so light dependent resistor. Output, put LDR value to the shell or to the screen. So that simply means print it out. So I'm using MicroPython, Thunny, and the Raspberry Pi Pico. So it's just going to print it out on the shell. I will show what, what that looks like later on. We've gone over this already. So start, get LDR value, put the value to screen, and keep repeating that forever because it's an infinite while loop. Now here's my circuit diagram. Nothing special here. Uh, I don't even remember what these pins are. So let me go and grab my Raspberry Pi pin layout. Let me pin that to one side. Let me open my Word document on this side. And I've gone ahead and said, okay, so... I'm using pin one, two, three, that's ground. I'm using the ground pin from here. So as you can see, that's one, two, three in, one, two, three in, that's ground pin 23. This one up here, ooh, I'm using one of the analog to digital converters. I don't remember which one it is. So if I count up 21, this is pin 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. So pin 31 is gonna be GP26, so that one there. So the very first analog to digital converter, so analog to digital zero. And as you can see in total, I've got four analog to digital converters, but um, I think I can only use three of them. So zero, one, and two. I might be able to use this one, but as it stands now, it's tied to ground. So I'll actually have to look into that, I'm not sure. So that's how my components are connected. And what happens then is one end of the LDR simply goes into the ground pin and the other one goes from um, the LDR to pin 31, but GP, so general purpose, input, output, so GPIO is what they normally call it, but here they just call it GP, GP26. So that's why it goes into there. And then I have my pin connections described down here in my document. My pin connections go like this. Pin, oh, I already had everything here, actually. So uh, pin 31, GP26, this should be. Um, to ADC zero, so analog to digital converter zero, so not GP15, but GP26 in this case, uh, goes from the Pi Pico to one end of the LDR. Now, because this is a resistor, we can actually turn this any which way we want. Resistors don't have any polarity, let's say. It doesn't have a positive or negative. Simply put them in any way you want, just like a normal resistor. And then after that, I say pin three, so that's the ground pin from the Raspberry Pi Pico. I actually lied. See, I made a mistake there. This is actually pin 20, one, two, three. Pin 23, uh, ground from the Raspberry Pi Pico goes to one end of the, goes to the other end of the LDR essentially. So again, remember to just make sure that your pin connections line up with your circuit diagram. Because see, I just picked up on mistakes I just made. This is something that the examiner will definitely pick up on as well. Now. The code, let me go to Thunny. Actually, let's see if I have it here in this folder. I do. Let me open Thunny. Let me zoom all the way in. And I've said from machine import pin. So we're gonna import pin functionality. And again, the purpose of this, we need to know the purpose of every single line of code that we write. Because again, BTEC level three engineering unit six exam, unit, uh, microcontrollers for engineers, you will need to know all of this. So I'm importing pin functionality so I can connect input and output devices. That's how I tell the Raspberry Pi, okay, this pin is gonna be for this purpose. And here I've said LDR, this is the variable name LDR. This can be anything. I can say LDR sensor, I can say input LDR sensor, I can, whatever I wanna name this, once it does not have a number at the beginning. So I cannot say one, two LDR, it has to be letters first. So I could have two, three, four, five LDRs in the same circuit, it would still be LDR. And I've said machine.adc. So machine.adc simply simple means from the machine library, use machine, obviously. The pin I want to use is ADC, so the analog to digital converter pin, and that's going to be pin 26. And I say you need to use the analog pin, well, to, I need to convert from an analog signal to something that the Raspberry Pi can read. So typically, computer systems work in the digital world. However, we as humans, we need things in analog form at times. So the temperature could be 
um, going up and down, it could be 25.4. That's not an exact figure, and it will always keep changing. Hence the reason for us to use analog to digital converters. We need to go from our version, from our world, to the world of computers. So analog world, which is the human world, to the digital world, which is the computer world. And I say, while true, print LDR.read. So we read the value from the LDR, and I say, give it to me in a 16-bit format. That's why we have U underscore 16. And I've also said that time.sleep, 0.5, so sleep for roughly half a second, and that's it. So what I'm going to do now with my very shaky hands is connect my LDR to the laptop and run this code, and let's see what it gives. So here's my circuit again. That's my LDR right there. So I'm going to run the code on my laptop. So bear with me because I didn't bring my tripod today. Click on that. Make sure this is ready to go. I'm going to now run this code and look at the value that I get. All right, there we go. I have 400, 384. Now I'm going to put my hand over it and see what value I get. It's not too dark in the room I'm in now. Put my hand over it like so. And as you can see, that goes from, what, three, 400 to 1,600, 1,500. I'm going to move my hand off it. And it goes back down again. So I can keep writing, a, well, I can write a program and uh, an, an if statement, an elif that says if the value falls down to, let's say, 350, it's not too dark right now, maybe turn the lights outside off because it's pretty okay right now. People can see easily. However, if it gets to, let's see what this value is going to be, if it gets to anything above, put my hand here, my hand there, above 11, above 1,000. If it gets above 1,000, then let's turn the lights on because it's pretty dark and people might want to see better, okay? So that's it. That's the LDR working. Now that you know how to use the LDR, I think everyone should know how to use this one because it's such an easy one to use. Plus, it did come up in a 20, don't quote me on this, 2019 or 2020 past paper for BTEC Level 3 Engineering. But it's such an easy sensor to use. And after you've done this part, that's on my screen now. All you then have to do is to do an if statement, an elif, and then do the LEDs maybe, or move a motor, or do whatever it is you want to do. Very nice input device to use because it's very simple. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully that was useful. Goodbye.